And we are live here at Faith and Victory Church, at least the the annex here. <laughs> we'll call it that. <laughs> this is my office and studio uh, here at Word of Faith Ministries, actually. But for tonight, it will be uh, where we're having service here at Faith and Victory Church. I want to welcome all of you tonight to our live service. We are live that means all mistakes included, <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, let me uh, welcome you tonight and also encourage you to stay with us because we're going to be getting into the Word of God concerning the power and influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. And uh, I know that you probably have testimony after testimony yourself of how the Holy Spirit has helped you and guided you and directed you in your life. We're going to look at the book of Acts and see some of the things that the Holy Spirit did to uh, really start the church and get us on the right foot as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to be getting into that this evening. Before we do that, let me uh, encourage you, if you are uh, a, whether you're a member or not of Faith and Victory Church, uh, we're taking our offering tonight virtually, since we're here online. Uh, and I shouldn't say taking, we are receiving. I'm trying to change my words. <laughs> you know, I came up Southern Baptist, we always took up the offering. We took up the offering. Well, uh, we need to receive the offering, okay? Uh, and that is with regard, actually, I put up the wrong slide here. This is about our building fund, which you can also contribute to. But the slide I wanted to put up here is the Square Cash app, Dollar Faith Victory Church. If you're using the Square Cash app, that is what you would use to contribute this evening. You can also go to PayPal and put in donations at fvc.org, and that will allow you to contribute through PayPal. And then you can also go to our main website, fvc.org. That's F as in faith. V is in victory, C is in church, dot O-R-G. And if you go to that web address, there is a link over on the right-hand side of the page that is called our Easy Giving button. And you can click on that and contribute as well. So I wanted to encourage you to do that. And then uh, our building fund. I did mean to put it up this time. And that is at uh, fvc.org slash building. You can read about our goals in getting into our own permanent building for Faith and Victory Church. And I tell you what, the Lord has done some tremendous financial miracles in that regard. And uh, I just encourage you to get involved with that because it is good ground to plant seed in uh, that will come spring and come up quickly because, as I said, we are good ground at Faith and Victory Church. So I wanted to give you that opportunity as well. Now, uh, before we go much further, let's uh, pray over the service and the offering and uh, just believe to be set in the right direction for this teaching tonight. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together virtually here over the internet, uh, through Facebook, and uh, all the other resources that we have to preach the Word of God. And I thank you, Father, for bringing just the right folks into this service tonight to receive from your Word people that need to understand the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we receive the offering tonight in faith, by faith, through faith, and believe that the people that, that send in tonight uh, through their financial contributions are abundantly blessed, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 11. Let me give you a little, kind of a little background of what we're talking about here. The power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Pastor Ed has been talking about the Holy Spirit for some time now in our main service on Sunday afternoons. By the way, we are having service Sunday afternoons at uh, New Life Family Church's building, which is on Ken Coy Road in Jamestown. If you go to fvc.org, the website, 
and click on location, you will have a map there of how to get to uh, the church. And uh, they are graciously letting us use their facility there. And uh, we're meeting at 1230 on Sunday afternoons, uh, which is after their service, their main service there. And uh, that is working out really well for us. So I encourage you to make plans to come out to our service uh, this Sunday and every Sunday to get into the Word of God with us, you know, physically as well as virtually as we are right now. Uh, but Pastor's been talking about the Holy Spirit. He's, uh, in the last few sessions, has been talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what we call the simple gifts of the Spirit. Now, we call them that to distinguish the difference between different gifts. There are ministry gifts, of which there are five-fold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Okay, and those ministry gifts are given uh, to the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus has provided those ministry gifts to the body of Christ to bring us up and to mature us. Okay, then the simple gifts of the Spirit, of which there are nine simple gifts of the Spirit, are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and pastor has been going into that, talking about that. I encourage you to uh, go to our YouTube channel, which by the way, you can go to youtube.com slash F-V-C-O-R-G. Now there's no dot there, but if you were to spell out fvc.org, leave the dot out, it's F-V-C-O-R-G. So, youtube.com slash F-V-C-O-R-G. Go to that site, and you'll be able to uh, view all the teaching that Pastor has done prior to this, and I encourage you to do that. Uh, and go ahead while you're there and subscribe. That would really be beneficial, not only to you, but to us as well, because uh, the more subscribers we get, uh, the more widespread the message of the Word of Faith can uh, can be delivered through that particular means. So subscribe, and then there's a little thing when you subscribe. You hit the red button to subscribe. There's a little bell there. Ding the bell, and that will allow you to be notified whenever a service is posted there on the YouTube site. So go ahead and do that. But at any rate, you can get caught up on the teaching that Pastor has been doing on the Holy Spirit and His gifts. Uh, we're talking about kind of a, a, a side aspect of that to a certain degree, and that is the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm teaching on all through this month of July on Wednesday night. So join us for the Wednesday night services to continue to get into that topic. Now let's look at Acts chapter 11. Uh, here in Acts chapter 11, Peter is giving a report to the church of what has just transpired over at Cornelius' house. And he's explaining to them what just happened. Now, we didn't read that incident because he recounts it in detail right here as he explains it to them. So I, I figured we'd pick up with that and you'd be able to see uh, kind of the background of what happened. Acts chapter 11, verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Now, before we go any further... <laughs> you got to understand what a shock this was to their system, okay? They, the majority of all these believers at this time, were all Jews, Jews and proselytes, Jewish background. They had no idea that Gentiles could even be born again. Now, I am thankful <laughs> that Gentiles could be born again, because as far as I know, I mean, I don't know my entire background ge genetically, but as far as I know, I don't have any Jewish ancestry. You know, oh, I'd love to in the natural. That would be great. But as far as I know, I'm just a Gentile in terms of my, uh, you know, physical genetic background. But the Jews at this time knew that Jesus had said during his earthly ministry, I am sent to the lost tribes of Israel. In other words, the people who were lost that were of the tribes of Israel. He even told a Samaritan woman that he was not sent to the Samaritans, which was a Gentile race. He said, it's not meat for me to give the bread to the dogs. 
called the woman a dog. <laughs> and she kept her thinking straight and said, Truth, Lord, but even the dogs receive the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now, she could have gotten all bent out of shape. She could have gotten out of, uh, shall we say, out of faith and over into animosity and been fussing about, I mean, who, you, who do you think you are saying that about me? Blah, 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 blah. You know, the whole nine yards. But no, she didn't do that. She kept her thoughts and her faith on the fact that she had come to receive her child's healing and nothing was going to dissuade her. So she listened to what the Lord said to her. I'm not come to the Gentiles. I'm come to the Jews. And she said, well, Lord, that may be true. But I tell you what, even the dogs get the crumbs off the master's table. And he said, oh, woman, great is thy faith. <laughs> you know, and it got, have it be done exactly as you have believed. Amen. She got what she was believing for in spite of the fact that Jesus wasn't sent to the Gentiles because, and this is going to get real theological sounding, but dispensationally, at that moment in time when he was talking to that woman, it wasn't for her. It was just to the Jews. But a different time, a different, what the Hebrew word is, is called a moed. M-O-E-D is the transliteration of that word from Hebrew. It means a time or season. A different dispensation or season had come, and that is the time of the church. And at that time, the Lord opened it up for Gentiles to be born again. But he had to get that across to these Jewish believers. Because as far as they were concerned, Jesus himself, in his earthly ministry, had said, this is not for the Gentiles. So it was, as I said, a great revelation when this happened. So let's keep reading. Uh, we left off with uh, verse 1, latter part of that verse. The, uh, the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. In other words, they'd been born again. Verse 2, And when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision... Now the circumcision is a group within the church here in Jerusalem that were thinking it was only for the Jewish people and it was only for those that were physically circumcised. In other words, looking at the Old Covenant rather than the New Covenant. And they were of a group or a sect called the circumcision. But it says, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. That's a good King James way of saying they were fussing. Okay? <laughs> saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. In other words, you broke the law, meaning the old covenant law, by doing so. Verse 4, But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. In other words, it was not an open vision. It was a vision that he had had within his spirit. You know, uh, if anybody else would have, there, would have been there, they wouldn't have seen it. His vision was not superseded, and he looked into the spirit world, so to speak. No, it was in a trance. He saw a vision. A certain vessel, uh, he saw a certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. In other words, basically all the animals that God had said in the law don't eat from these. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. And I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. In other words, I'm a good Jewish boy. And I have not broken the law concerning dietary law. But then the voice answered again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. What God is telling him here, this is a new age. 
This is a new moed. Okay? And something has changed. And this is what I'm telling you. By showing you this. Now, just between you and me, <laughs> and Pastor Ed, he agrees with this as well. I'm sure glad God did this. Because I get to eat bacon. And I get to eat barbecue. And I'm telling you, Pastor Ed, Pastor Ed's barbecue is the best there is. Okay? And we wouldn't get to eat that if we were still under those dietary laws. You see what I'm saying? So praise the Lord that this got changed. Amen? But beyond that, <laughs> praise the Lord that it got changed to allow Gentiles in. Okay? I mean, that's the most important part. Anyway, the voice answered me again from heaven. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times. It seems like God does this. He repeats things three times if he's really trying to make a point. I noticed that in Brother Hagin's life and ministry as well. If you, re you read the book, I Believe in Visions, a lot of the visions he had, the Lord would re repeat things to him three times. I think he just drives it home. At any rate, this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And catch this, verse 12. And the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, bade me go with them, nothing doubting. In other words, the Holy Spirit guided me, directed me, spoke to me, and said, go with these men who were going to take him to a house that belonged to a centurion that was a Gentile that he wasn't, by the law, supposed to go into. So this was really breaking their traditions, breaking their, basically their law, in effect, by going into this guy's house. Yet the Holy Spirit told him, go, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. Now, I'm sure when he said that, those that were of the circumcision went, oh, how dare he? You know, just like when Jesus would heal somebody on the Sabbath day, and the Pharisees would all go, oh, what's he doing healing on the Sabbath day? They're so concerned about the, the points of the law, they're missing the move of the Spirit. That's a Selah moment, by the way. Let's, let's repeat that again, okay? They're so concerned about the points of the law, they miss the move of the Spirit. Now, pulling that thought into today's thinking, to us as New Testament believers, you could well say, don't get so caught up in the letter that you miss the move of the Spirit. Hmm... That's something we could go into for a, a good little period of time. Because, see, I as a teacher am very, very tuned to what the Word says at all times. And Pastor Ed has said many times before in his teaching, in his ministry, that very often people that just are so word, strictly word-oriented, uh, they get dry. They get kind of stale. You know, uh, he likes to say wordy. <laughs> you know, well, there's nothing wrong with the word. What's wrong is the way that you view the word. Again, let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with the word. Importance of the word is critical. Adherence to the word is critical. But you can get so caught up with the letter that you lose track of the Spirit, of the flow of the Holy Spirit. And here's a case where the Lord is, is moving supernaturally to change the dynamic here, to show them that there's a change in uh, the way the dis dispensation is ministered. Okay? So if they'd have been so caught up, as the circumcision was, with the letter of the law, then they'd have missed the move of the Spirit into the new dispensation. So it's really critical to be sensitive to the Spirit as well as 
keeping it in line with the Word. Okay? So let's keep reading here. Uh, the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me. We entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words. And that's kind of interesting, if you think about it. The angel spoke to him, spoke to Cornelius. He could have told him words. Why didn't he lead him to the Lord? Because that's not the angel's mission. The angel's mission is to say what the Lord has them say to deliver a message. Okay? So he told him, you call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, and he'll preach to you and tell you what you need to do to be saved. You see that? I think that's a critical point. Because people get all caught up in angel this and angel that. And they forget that God has called us men, women, here on the earth, physical, living people, to preach the word of God. It's up to us. It's not up to angels. Now, angels will do a lot for you. They're sent to be uh, to minister for those who've been made heirs of salvation, which is us. But they're there for protection. They're there to help you. They're there to do a lot of things, but not to preach. So here, he says, go and, and let Peter preach to you. And then he says, verse 14, Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. That was his goal, is to be born again. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Now, what does that mean? That means that a repeat of what happened on the day of Pentecost happened to these Gentiles, and they were born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues, as they did on the day of Pentecost. Amen? Now, this is what's called, theologically speaking, the Gentile Pentecost, for that reason. Then he said, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now again, I've heard people say, I, and as I said, I was raised Southern Baptist, and I've heard people say, the Bible doesn't say there's a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Really? <laughs> I can show you several places in Scripture where it uses the phrase, baptized with the Holy Ghost. You should receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It's a biblical term. And it's talking about a second unique experience, past salvation, where you receive the Holy Spirit, he comes to indwell you, and the initial sign of that is speaking in other tongues. And we could give you plenty of scripture. As a matter of fact, Pastor Ed did that, oh, it's been several Sundays ago. If you go to that YouTube channel that I mentioned, uh, youtube.com slash F-V-C-O-R-G, one of the recent messages... And if you look at the description, it'll show this, are the incidents where they received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, and it demonstrates that that was the initial gift, was speaking in other tongues. But here it says, they received as we did at the beginning. In other words, it was a repeat of that same thing. John indeed baptized with water, you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift. Now, if you look this up in the Greek, it actually says the same gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? In other words, this is God moving. I'm not going to argue. When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God saying, look what they said, 
Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now, notice what he didn't say. He didn't say God saved all the Gentiles and they don't have to receive anything. He didn't say that. He didn't say everybody's going to heaven whether they like it or not. He didn't say that. No, he said God has opened this up he has granted unto them the right to repent, receive the Lord, and be born again. Same as we did at the beginning. Okay? So this is the Gentile Pentecost. This is when they received that ability to be born again. And that's what happened at Cornelius' house. The whole house, whew, after everything they'd seen and heard, they got born again. Right there while Peter was preaching. Didn't even wait for him to give an invitation. You know, just in case there was any hesitation on anybody's part, they went ahead and received, prayed while he was still preaching, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, spoke in other tongues. Uh, Acts eleven nineteen goes on to say, Now when they were scattered, they, the church, scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, because you know, Stephen had been stoned prior to this, traveling as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. This is what they'd done previously. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. So once they got the revelation that Grecians, Gentiles, others that were not Jews, could come in, they started preaching the Lord to them. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. So this is when a vast harvest started, and the church really got off the ground. And there were many, there were already thousands that had received. Now more thousands and thousands received. And the tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which was at Jerusalem. This is verse 22. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, when, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Now, let me, let me take a little side journey here. <laughs> I see a lot of discussion by believers about the importance of soul winning, what we call colloquially in the church soul winning. Now you can get into the very detailed semantics of this and talk about the fact that we are a spirit, we have a soul, we live in a body, and that it's the spirit that's born again. The soul or mind has to be renewed to the word of God and you live in a physical body. We're not getting into that part. I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is whether you're talking about a soul winner or a spirit winner, they emphasize soul winning, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. However, a lot of Christians leave out the part of teaching young Christians about the Word of God, the importance of teaching, the importance of discipleship. Now, I'm not talking about weird discipleship. There was a movement way, way, way back in the 70s, I guess it was, maybe so, maybe still in the early 80s, but mainly in the 70s, I remember it. It was called the Discipleship Movement. And it was, it was just ridiculous. I mean, you know, you couldn't even go on vacation unless you talked to your uh, prayer group leader and got their permission. And if you had wanted to get married, you had to get their permission. And, it was, you know, discipleship was taken to the extreme. I don't know what it is. Seems like the church sometimes gets a, a a thought, gets a teaching, and then they run off and take it to extremes. And uh, that's the way it was with discipleship. Now, there are things about discipleship as a you know truth that are legitimate. You do need to go to a local church. 
you do need to be ministered to in a church setting. You do need to have a pastor. I've known people that were, you know, thought of themselves as spiritual lone rangers. I don't need a pastor. Well, yes, you do. How do I know you need a pastor? Because he gave, Jesus, gave the church pastors as well as the other fivefold ministry. So he wouldn't have given us pastors if we weren't supposed to have a pastor. Okay? <laughs> so what I'm getting at here is we need to be disciplined believers. That's what a disciple is, a disciplined believer. And in order to become a disciplined believer, you need to go to church, you need to assemble yourselves together, and so much the more as you see the day approaching, and that day is the last of the last days, which is what we're living in. So more than ever, we need to be in church. We need to be under the instruction of a pastor. We need to be brought up in the things of God. We need to be tithing. We need to be giving. We need to be doing what we know to do, according to the Word of God, to live a life that is set apart unto God. And that includes teaching. Which is why the church here said we need to send forth Barnabas to go to Antioch because we hear they're getting bored again there. Who, when he came and seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they should cleave unto the Lord. Now, the cleaving unto the Lord is a way of saying stick with so to speak, the program, you know. In other words, stay with the Word. Put the Word of God first place. Fellowship together. Do what's at hand to do. Make full work of your ministry. Amen? It goes on to say, For he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Now, church growth, a lot of people have church growth seminars. And, you know, a church growth seminar can be good as long as you keep everything in perspective. But the, the, the pattern of church growth is to preach the word to them, get them born again, get them in a good local church, get them under pastors and teachers, and get those folks trained and discipline, that's what a disciplined believer, disciple is, get them disciplined in the Word of God and in fellowshipping together. Let me, let me say something right here. You're not going to grow to the degree you need to grow. You're not going to come up in the Lord to the degree you need to come up in the Lord until you get into a local church, a good <laughs> that's preaching and teaching the Word of God. I've said many times before, and I repeat it often, where you go to church is a matter of life and death. Let me tell you, you don't want to be facing sickness and disease in this world today without being surrounded by people that are preaching and teaching the Word of God concerning healing. And if you go to a church that says, well, you just don't know what God's going to do, he may take a notion, he may heal you, but he may not. Matter of fact, probably he won't. That's what they're really saying. And you can die. I mean die. Listening to that. Or you can go to a church that's preaching the word, preaching the word concerning healing, building you up in the word concerning healing, able to minister to you supernaturally according to the move of the Spirit, and receive your physical healing. I've received my healing. My wife has received her healing. Uh, person after person at Faith and Victory Church, Pastor Ed, uh, Miss Janie, uh, the whole church has testimonies of supernatural healing. Pastor Ed has had many uh, occasions where claws taken that he's prayed over have been taken from his body and laid on folks and they've gotten healed supernaturally. Now, you can choose to go to a church that doesn't do that, 
and you're not going to get healed. So where you go to a church is a matter of life and death. So I encourage you, get into a good Bible teaching, word of faith, spirit-moving church, like Faith and Victory Church, and grow there. Grow up in the Lord there. You say, well, yeah, but Dr. Bill, you've been in that church for 30-plus years. I mean, of course you're going to say that. Listen, I started 30-plus years ago, and I've been there 30-plus years, but I started at some point. You know what I'm saying? We all start somewhere, and you can do the same thing. Come to Faith and Victory Church and grow where you're planted. Listen to the Word of God. Grow in the Word of God. Receive from the fellowship and the move of the Spirit and the power of God and the Word of God that's being preached. Become a disciplined believer. And before you know it, you'll be sharing the Word. You'll be laying hands on the sick and watching people recover. You'll see results in your life. Amen. Because you became a disciplined believer. And that's what happened here in this church in Antioch. Amen. Because they sent Barnabas down to disciple them. So I'm just wanting to say here, you know, it's yeah, it's important to get folks born again, no question. But don't just leave them. You know, it'd be like a baby being born and then throw about it on their own and say, well, you know, if he's got anything, he'll make it. And yet there have been people who've had revival meetings and said, well, you know, if those folks got anything, they'll be back. You know, Brother Hagin talks about a, a situation where he went and preached at a church, and the pastor of that church actually said that. If I got anything, they'll be back. And Brother Hagin said, I, he said, I closed the meeting down. He said, I just couldn't preach in a place like that. And bless his heart. I guess not. They should be sending folks out and drawing them in, discipling them, helping them, encouraging them, ministering to them, providing means by which they can grow. Here at Faith and Victory Church, we have uh, new member classes, and we have training classes available, both online and live, you know, as necessary to help train you and bring you up. We've got we've got tape libraries. we got audio libraries. we got all kinds of things available for folks to grow and be trained in the Word of God. Amen? Now, I, I say all this to talk about the power and influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. You need to be open to the power of and influence of the Spirit. Notice here, the Lord directed them. The Spirit guided them. The Spirit bade them go. Do you notice all those references? The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding and directing the church. Well, he didn't quit leading, guiding, and directing the church. He's still leading, guiding, and directing the local church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to expect that. We need to receive that. We need to be open to that. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, we'll stop right here for this evening. I trust you enjoyed the message tonight. And we'll be getting into more of this as we go along and getting into examples of uh, the Lord directing, guiding, and influencing the local church. Amen? Well, for right now... We'll uh, leave you here at this, but I tell you, take advantage of all the things that we have available. Our website, fvc.org, has all kinds of things available, uh, you know, to teach and train you. We have the YouTube channel, all kinds of things there available at fvc.org. So join us there, and join us this Sunday at our live service uh, where you can fellowship with us together in the Word of God. Amen? Well, remember until next time to fulfill the Word of God.